Hello, this is Daniel Tamayo, and I'll be presenting about zirconium oxide. Zirconium oxide is a white crystalline metal oxide used in the production of hard ceramics, characterized for its high fracture toughness, hardness, and low thermal conductivity. It is also referred to as zirconia and provides a plethora of uses in ceramics. In regards to the element zirconium, it is the 40th element on the periodic table and is generally mined from a zirconium silicate mineral called zircon. The largest reservoirs of zircon in the world can be found in Australia, primary, primarily located along the Western Hemisphere, where alluvial deposits are mined along the coastline. Zircon is mined through two separate methods, dry or wet mining, sometimes called dredge mining. Dry mining processes are used for ores that are found in shallower areas or when ore is found alongside harder rock. Trucks, excavators, or uh, other equipment is used to extract the ore and move to further processing. For dredge and wet mining, this is usually done at mining areas below or at sea level, such as coastlines or beaches, but sufficient deposits can also be found further inland. Zircon is contained within the loose sand and gravel deposits. Usually, uh, an artificial pond is created so that a floating dredge can be used to scoop the sand deposits and collect the materials. The floating dredge, as seen on the photo, is a large steam shovel attached to a barge that pumps in the sand from the waterbed. The collective material is then placed within uh, wet concentration plants. These plants are often found right behind the floating dredge and washes the oncoming sand to separate the materials by their density. The waste is expelled back into the artificial pond and the remaining material is ready for further processing and refinement. This collected material of zirconium-infused sand or gravel is often referred to as zirconium sand. The process of refining zirconium can be broken down into three steps, separating, purifying, and grinding. In the separation process, spiral concentrators are used to separate the slurry of materials by their density and weight. The zirconium sand is placed into feed distributors, which evenly distributes the materials to flow down several stories of tall spiral columns. As the materials fall, gravity and centrifugal forces are used to separate the mixture, as heavier and denser particles will gravitate to the inside of the spiral column, while lighter particles will separate to the outside edge or the perimeter. The waste is separated through several processes of magnetic and electrostatic separators. Because zircon possesses very low magnetic and electrically conductive properties compared to the rock surrounding it, several passes through these separators are able to remove the waste and leave only the zircon concentrate. For the purifying stage, the zircon is first treated with a reducing agent to free the zirconium from the uh, common impurities. Chlorine is typically utilized and several washers may be necessary to properly purify the samples. The remaining zirconium particles are sintered or heated in a furnace to join loose powders into a more ductile and usable product. This process utilized for uh, pure zircon ores and results in the creation of pure zirconium. For less pure zircon, it is turned into uh, zirconia instead or zirconium oxide, a mixture of coke, iron borings, and lime as added to the zircon to reduce the uh, silica found in the ore. This mixture is then placed in an electric arc furnace that melts and fuses the mixtures at around 3000 degrees Celsius. This process results, uh, results in the formation of zirconium oxide and fume silica, which is a powdery uh, silicon oxide byproduct. Zirconia can also be found naturally in batalite minerals, which contain high concentrations of pure zirconium oxide. Grinding is typically, uh, typically utilized to extract the zirconium oxide, creating zirconia sand without the need to filter or clean the minerals. Zirconium oxide can, can be manufactured into ceramic cutting tools such as knives or machine toolings for its high toughness and low thermal conductivity. In the creation of machine toolings or inserts, the manufacturing process utilizes dry pressing to create the desired tool shape. The materials are first placed in a milling machine alongside water, ethanol, and an organic binder, where a rotating cutting tool slowly grounds and bores the ingredients into a fine, homogeneous slurry mixture. 
Additionally, aluminum oxide can also be added to help strengthen and improve the toughness in a 1 to 5 ratio. The slurry mixture is then dried using a spray dryer, which rapidly dries the slurry into a powder using hot gases to evaporate any uh, remaining liquid. The resulting powder is inspected before placed in a storage bin to be used for upcoming productions. In the next stage, a dry pressing machine feeds the powder into a die that holds the desired tooling shape, where it is then pressed using almost 12,000 pounds of pressure to compact the powder into the desired tool shape. The organic binder placed from the uh, milling process helps to hold the shape of the tooling after it was pressed, where it is then weighed and visually inspected for impurities. The pressed tooling is still fragile and must be sintered or heated to achieve the desired hardness. A sintering oven heats the materials between 1000 to 2000 degrees Celsius depending on the size and shape of the tooling. This can last uh, approximately 12 hours. During this process, the organic binder is destroyed and the overall shape of the tooling shrinks to about half its original size. At this stage in the manufacturing process, the toolings or inserts are extremely hard, so a diamond grinding machine is utilized to shape the tooling into the desired tolerances before they are coated using a chemical vapor deposition machine. Here the finished tooling is placed inside a vacuum chamber that is heated to the appropriate reactive temperatures. A gaseous mixture is pumped in that chemically reacts and binds to the surface of the inserts. Typically, a silicon-based coating is utilized to strengthen the thermal and wear resistance of the toolings. Zirconium oxide can also be utilized for ceramic spray coatings to provide considerable corrosive and thermal protection to components and machines. Following a similar process as previously mentioned, the zirconium oxide powder is placed in a milling machine and spray dried to create the desired consistency. A plasma arc sprayer is utilized to create the hard coatings for applications that experience high temperature workloads such as the insides of furnaces or engines. The plasma arc sprayer typically uses superheated argon or nitrogen gas that is projected as a plasma jet towards the substrate. The zirconium oxide powder is fed into the plasma spray torch that melts and blasts the molten material to the substrate, reaching temperatures of around 10,000 to 15,000 degrees Celsius. As it cools, the spray coating hardens and bonds to the substrate, providing a thermal and anti-corrosive barrier. Several passes may also be necessary to achieve the desired coating thickness or to provide an even coating throughout.